Pastia. Okay. So welcome, Mrs. Hadid. It's a real great pleasure for us to see you here in the Heder Ali Center. So uh, we would like to ask you a few questions so you can share your impressions with us. Uh, you attended the groundbreaking ceremony of the Heder Aliyev Center. And now you're here today after some time and the center is fully functional. So can you tell us what are your impressions of the final appearance of the project? Well, I think it's you know, amazing because you know, when you design a project, you have um, certain expectations and you know, it's not always, you don't end up with what you, what you want. And I think it's been a really a, an incredible experiment for us in terms of um, achieving uh, this building, which is quite you know, complex and quite difficult. And um, achieving it in this way, I think it's been fantastic. So, um, you are um, uh, just coming to the sort of the whole concept of the Haider Aliyev Center. I mean, definitely it's a magnificent building, but can you share with us maybe a very short story? How did the whole idea emerge uh, with you? Well, I think that in about, uh, let's say, 20 years ago, uh, we were trying to, uh, you know, doing research, design research, to discover what is the best way to achieve a certain scale of buildings. And at the time, we thought of uh, the idea of land formation, and then it became land formation topography and landscape. And I think this project was one of the, uh, the outcome of these 20 years of experimentation in this, uh, in this topography and landscape uh, research. But of course, aided with the computational skills, one was able to achieve what we call complete fluid architecture. So the idea for fluidity in this building was to how the park on the exterior, how the city uh, merges with the interior in a seamless, continuous way. And that the, uh, like the tiling of this building, where the tiling of the floor is almost the same material. So as you move around the building, the idea that there were three programs and each program is merged with the next program. So they are seen as one building with three entities. Let's say it could be a cultural facility, a museum, a theater, and the library. All, they flew onto each other in a seamless way. So instead of having three different blocks, the blocks are one, one like a mountain range or, you know, whatever. So, um Looking at the works that you've created uh, for many years, uh, one can see there are some pieces of architecture where you have sharp angles, some which are more of a curved lines. I mean, so I think the original work was all to do with, um, let's say, uh, sharp, sharp angles, not because of the angle, because it was at the time, um, you know, like shards or uh, breaking of glass and whatever. But I think it eventually merged into uh, fluidity. So, in a way, let's say if you imagine uh, bits of snow ice breaking in the water and icebergs, and we maybe had the more sharpness, but ultimately we wanted to achieve a total fluidity. And, uh, and that change from uh, the break to, a, uh, to one continuous, continuous object. So, uh, in addition to become known as the venue of uh, international uh, conferences. Heder Aliyev Center also initiated a number of projects and I think you've been to some of these or at least you've seen some of these in the center. What's your impression of the projects that you see here, the, the exhibits? Well I think it's very I think it's very interesting because you know obviously some of them are very nice, some of them are so-so, but I think what is interesting for the from people from art to see the level of investment in new architecture in the city. You know I was really um, amazed when I returned how much has changed, you know. Um, it has a much more urban feeling, everything is uh, very uh, manicured and lit up, it feels uh, more dense. So I think that, you know, I think in, f in the four or five years it also changed a lot. And I think it's, it's nice for people to see what, what kind of things are going on here, what people are designing or what they're doing. How did um, Soviet and historical background of Baku affect uh, the initial concept? <coughs> well, I mean, I think that, um, I mean, the, the issue with uh, context is more to do with the maybe social context or uh, other forces which uh, can operate on a project as opposed to just your immediate context. 
uh, we know that this program is different than the block. They're not the same as the blocks because the blocks are all housing or offices or whatever. So this was uh, really this work is about anti-block architecture. So um, it relates in terms of more program. You know, there's a cultural program relating to the neighboring buildings as opposed to imitating the existing things. Avant-garde architecture uh, encouraged the, the development of uh, digital technologies and uh, what would you create without, uh, well, in pre-computer uh, generated architecture, I mean, before the computer? Well, I think that the ideas of this product really was generated before uh, computational skills. But I think what computational skills have done for this project in particular was interesting because I think that one could have never achieved this level of fluidity. Uh, and also, what is interesting about computation is that it makes it seamless, not only in the architecture, but in the way you produce material, you know, the, in production and in fabrication. So I think it is very exciting the way all the exterior was fabricated all through computing, you know, all the skin to achieve this level of precision. Uh, I think it could have been done before, but I think it was not the same level of precision. And also consistency. So I think it can, you know, one has been able through computation to achieve things which are maybe difficult to achieve before. What's, what's your attitude towards paper architects, I think? Yeah, you, the, those who are more theoreticians. He happened to be a very close friend of mine. Uh, I mean, he passed away a year ago, uh, but he was a very close friend. And I personally believe um, that the, the message from uh, any project in architecture is equally important. But what I think is very great about experiencing a building and space, you know, uh, I think in drawing you can only imagine, and when you build it, you can you can actually experience it. And I think I think that the paper projects were very important to etch, to do the next iteration to make the next experiment. How do you find the balance between functionality and beautiful concept? I think you can do them, you can do them more. As long as you can, I mean, the issue is you have to challenge the orthodox way of, uh, you know, um, of dealing with space. Uh, you know, I think that, for example, in certain places, they think that the only optimal space is done in a very particular way. And I obviously don't believe that. You know, I think that you can achieve a different kind of function or the same function through a different speciality. If you look at the, the idea of the theater, historically, it was never always done the same way. Or a, a living room or a bedroom or an office space. They don't have to, I mean, certain programs, of course, they have to adhere the size of a stadium or a swimming pool or to have certain kind of parameters, uh, you know, which which should which are they optimized, uh, but the way they look don't have to be all the same. What is your attitude towards preserving the historical buildings? Um, I I think it is very important to keep some of them if they have very high value, if they are very good. Uh, but I think it's equally important to be able to do new things because that also is symbolic of that generation of that moment. Um, you know, I don't think everything old is good and everything is new is bad. I think you have to be able to marry these worlds. So, so Mrs. Hadid, everything changes, architecture changes too. So what is your view on how the architecture will look like, say, in 25 years from now? I don't know, I couldn't say. I mean, I think that, um, you know, 30 years ago, people did not expect there would be such a radical change in that period. And there was, you know. Uh, and so, uh, and that was, I think, is very exciting that in my, uh, in my one's lifetime, witness this change. In the same way, one witnessed the change in modernism, you know, from very kind of uh, traditional buildings to modernism, that must have been a very exciting moment. And it happened again in the 60s. So I think that, you know, I don't know, I think it depends. I, uh, I think that not all the ideas have yet to be achieved. When I started work, I thought the modernist project was not completed, and therefore this is a continuation of modernism. But as I, as I research, we discover something else which is not just the early modernist period. So I think that some of these issues which we are discussing now, or we are doing now, then we get more refined and more uh, elaborated in future. 
what uh, what project would you like to uh, realize in Iraq? Well, I think that you know uh, in Iraq, you know, we're doing the central bank. We might be doing some other projects. I mean, I have a particular interest in in, in Iraq in planning, for example, because that will set the roots for new life. Uh, it doesn't have to be grand building. It could be, uh, you know, just very simple ideas of how you develop your cities for the future. Because you know, in Iraq, nothing happened for 30 years, uh, and so I think it, this could be very interesting to be, to be, uh, to um, let's say, be involved in the way the seeds are planted uh, in these places. Okay. And what was your first uh, architectural impressions of Baku? I actually like like it. Also, you know, it's very nice light, the light, and um, I think people who have this nice light, like the Mediterranean, people expect it to happen everywhere. But it doesn't happen everywhere, uh, and that impacts on the way you see the buildings as well, because sometimes they are because quite flat, so it lit it very differently. I think also the different periods of architecture in Baku, they work very well together, you know, uh, whether pre-Soviet, post-Soviet, during Soviet, uh, you know, and I have a particular interest in um, constructivism, especially in my early period, so I think it's, it's very nice to, it has a kind of familiarity to me, uh, Baku, although I don't know it very well, because it has this marriage of maybe some of kind of West ideas, or merge with maybe traditional Eastern ideas. Like if you go to the bazaar or the old town, you have these worlds all exist at the same time. Okay, thank you very much indeed for taking time. Thank you.